I know I'm getting older because my two-year-old grandson rather play in my mulch than in a swing or in the pool. So he's in my mulch bed all the time, and we have a, a bird bath that the top's off, so he likes to just look up at me and take the mulch and put it in the bird bath. And, just, and then the other thing I want to kind of get on soapbox about is fireworks. I mean, I know there was no red, white, and boom, but you wouldn't know that from being in my house. We got to keep our grandkids last night. Notice I said we got to keep our grandkids last night. And they're having Amy Donuts this morning, so that's the payback when the man picks them up later. But So we're trying to get Donovan to sleep, and when you think that the fireworks have finally stopped, they start back up again. And now, I've never been in a war zone. I'm, I, I've never, so I don't know what that's like, but I, I, I could imagine it's what was going on at my house last night because they were behind my house, and then they were in front of my house. And I don't, I mean, we used to buy fireworks when I was young, but what they're selling now, I mean, I thought our house shook a couple times with some of the things that they were shooting off. And, and then Stella would hear the fireworks, and then she'd want to look out the window because, I mean, it looked like red, white, and boom in our backyard. So, um, but anyway, I'm off my soapbox. So what I wanted to do, I'll probably teach for Bill a couple times this year. So I, I was looking at the book of James and the first chapter, and I thought, all right, well, I'll teach James 1. Well, we won't get through the book of James, the first chapter this morning. We'll probably only go to, to, to verses 2 through 4. And I, I thought that it was appropriate for the world we live in today and what's going on. So let's start with James 1 verses 2 through 4. So James says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, I think when I thought about this, this chapter, or this, especially these verses, I think that's the difference of Christianity in a few words is right here. Because does the world consider trials with joy? Do those words even go together, trials and joy? I mean, it, it doesn't, does it? In the world we live in today, the trials that people face, how do they deal with those trials? Well, if it's in a home setting, 45 to 50% of marriages today end in divorce. So is that dealing with trials and joy with that type of number? According to the, it was either the World Health Organization or the CDC, there were 800,000 suicides last year. 800,000 suicides, that's one every 40 seconds. What's more compelling is that they estimate there's 20 other attempts for every successful suicide. Think about those numbers. Does the world consider trials with joy? And they don't. And I think that's where we need, to, as Christians, one way we can let our light shine is that when there are trials in our lives, how we deal with those trials. And uh, I know it's difficult at times when we think about some of the trials that we face and how we deal with those. Uh, but as Christians, as Christians, that's how we have to learn to, to live our lives. And if we do that, if we can pattern our life after what James is saying here, think about how, number one, how, how healthier we will be. What does stress to do to people? What do you, what's, when, when somebody's under a lot of stress, how are they dealing with it? Where's the medical professions in here? What happens with our bodies when we're under stress? It's not good, right? So, uh, so stress isn't good, and that's how people deal with trials when they don't deal with them with joy. A lot of times it's with stress. So when we look at the first chapter of James here in these verses, I think that when we think about as our Christian walk, our Christian life, how we live, <clears throat> that one of the things that sets us apart is we can look at that situation. Good times happen to all people. Bad times happen to all people. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, it says, He caused the sun to rise on the evil and the good, 
and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So James tells us to consider, so when it, let's look at a few things in that verse. He says, consider pure joy, my brothers, whenever you fall in trials of many kind. Did he say if? He didn't say if, did he? He said when we do. So we know we're going to face those trials and tribulations, and we have to be prepared for those. And then another word that I think is key here is he talks about when you fall into. Now, I'm getting older. I used to be when I was a teenager, falling off my bike or, or falling whatever, it didn't affect as much, does it? But when we get older, if we fall, what, what happens? I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. I mean, our brains break when we're young, but not as bad. Not, they, they probably crack easier when we're older. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, luckily this morning, Donovan was in his high chair, and he actually would be on WWE. I don't know if Gordon watches that all the time, because basically he just jumps. Well, he was in his high chair, and then Rita who's not the picture of health, goes to get him and he dives for her. And luckily they fall on a little table that's there. Or otherwise, I may not have been here this morning. We might have been at the emergency room. So, yeah, when we get older, if we fall, it, it has a whole different effect. But we know what falling means, right? And that's what it says here. When we fall into temptation, trials and temptations, when we fall into those things, that they can do more damage. What I want to spend time on as we look at today is perseverance. You know, whenever we fall, whenever we find trials, you know, it might be finances, especially when we think of where we are today in our world. I think almost 12% of Americans are unemployed now. Uh, obviously, with the with the pandemic pandemic going on with COVID-19, we all have to now, I guess, in the city of Columbus. We played golf yesterday, and walking into the pro shop, we had to wear this just to go into the pro shop. So now, in the way of Columbus, this is now a norm. So we're going to wear face masks. So things as we know it are changing, and they're changing every day. And so there could be financial strains on families, on individuals, with what's happening here. Uh, it could be health. It could be your health. It could be the health of a loved one. Uh, it could be your job. Maybe you've lost your job in the, the current situation. Um, maybe you've been praying for something and you haven't seen what you hope was the results of that. Uh, obviously, if we listen to the news and see what's on there, there, there's nothing good there. But each of us are going to face different trials. It's how we deal with those trials is what will help us along. Uh, when we look at what James says here, I think an example of that is in Peter. If we would turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. Try to keep my hand off the microphone. In Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, Peter says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange things happen to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. Did Peter do that? Do we have an example of Peter rejoicing after trials, tribulations, beatings? If we turn to Acts, the fifth chapter... when he was in front of the Sanhedrin. Acts chapter 5, in verses 40 to 42. And they agreed with him, and when they had called the, for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So that they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for his name, and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So here we have an example of, of Peter living that life in that uh, he was joyous in the, in the tribulations, the trials that they were faced, and 
they didn't conform to what man told them to do. Uh, they did their own thing. They, still, they continued on uh, teaching and preaching, teaching the, the word. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So there it's telling us our faith is more precious than gold. What's valuable? What's one of the most valuable commodities in the world today? You hear them all the time talk about the, the price of gold and what gold is by the ounce. And uh, so... We think of gold as being very precious and worth a lot. It's nothing compared to what our faith should be. And so I think when we look at this verses that James gives us here, and what this all does is it basically, it, the trials that we have help to solidify our faith. The question is, who does it solidify the faith, our faith for? For ourselves or for God? Or both? when you answer, or maybe you are, and I can't hear you because of your mask. Both, yeah. It, 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 solid, it helps build our faith. It helps us know, have more confidence in the faith that we have, uh, but also it's God. Does God test us from a, from a faith side? From faith. Does God test us to prove our faith? Yeah. What did he do with Abraham? In Genesis, the 22nd chapter. What do we have the story of there with Abraham? What, did, what had Abraham done to this point in his life? Did he prove faithful to God? I mean, he left family, he left everything, and followed this voice who made him promises. What was one of the promises that he made? That from his seed, all men will be blessed. And so... We know Abraham and Sarah, how old they were when they finally had Isaac. And now what's God asking Abraham to do to Isaac? Sacrificing. Sacrificing. And so if we look at chapter 22 of, of Genesis and we go through that scenario, what's important, or not, not, it's all important, but verse 12 says, the angel of the Lord said, that now I know. So I, I think that, yes, that our faith is tested as we live our lives, but it's to help us have more faith, a stronger faith. And our faith is in Jesus Christ. So what awaits us at the end? What are we working towards? A heavenly home, correct? So the trials that we face here help us get to our heavenly home. So that's what we're, we're basically, uh, what these trials are doing is they're basically, when we read this, knowing that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Okay, so let's talk about what is perseverance. It's defined as, it's a continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. The action or condition of an instant instance of persevering and steadfastness. So, just a few things to uh, people in our history to point out. Has anyone had Hershey's chocolate in the last week? I, I would say day, but or say the t morning. But yeah, Hershey's chocolate, guilty, done it. Hershey's chocolate, most of us have eaten chocolate produced by them at some point in time. Milton Hershey, who made it happen, he dropped out of the fourth grade of school. He took up an apprentice with a printer where he was fired. After that, he took another apprentice with the candy maker he started three unsuccessful candy businesses. All of them brought him nothing but a lot of financial loss, but also experience. He never gave up, though all this time and, and that he messed that he went through. But instead, he started the Hershey Company, and thus brought us the Swiss Delicacy Milk Chocolate. And we all enjoy, I mean, that's a worldwide, not just America thing. Um, and then, of course, we know Thomas Edison. Uh, he was prefer a prolific inventor. He was young when he was pulled out of school because he was deemed to be too stupid and unteachable by his teachers. But it was his perseverance that made him an icon in not only the science circles, but also the industry. He held a 
1,093 American patents. As Edison had himself said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So you keep trying, you keep pressing on, perseverance. And then Abe Lincoln, I don't think you can talk about perseverance without Abe Lincoln. Uh, he's one of, depends on who you talk to, but one of our greatest presidents. He was born into poverty. He faced defeat throughout his life. He lost eight elections. He twice failed in business and suffered a nervous breakdown. But he never quit, and then he went on to become president and then did what he did. So when we look at history, there are people who fail, but they pick themselves up and they continue on. As Christians, we fail, but what do we have? I remember the bumper sticker. You don't see a lot of bumper stickers anymore. Now you see stickers on windows. But there was a bumper sticker that says, uh, not perfect, but forgiven. I'm a Christian. Something like that. It might have said it different. But basically, it says that you're not perfect, but because you're, you're forgiven, because we're a Christian. So we are going to fail, but as Christians, we need to persevere and, and have forgiveness. Any comments or no questions, but any comments at this point? Okay. So perseverance is something that not, will, will not happen in life on accident. People quit God all the time. People quit life all the time. So perseverance is a, is a choice and it's an act of will. We persevere in our faith with God in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. We persevere that God will help us through circumstances that are out of our control and are, can be hurtful at time. So we need to persevere. A couple ways that I think we can persevere. I, I listed four. We, there's more, no doubt. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to pray. We need to pray so we persevere. Probably one of the hardest things to do in the midst of a trial is also the best thing to do, and that's to pray. So think about when we find ourselves in a difficult situation, what are some of the things that we do first? I know we don't swear because that's not what any of us do, but maybe we do say some things that, that uh, kind of stress reliever or, or something. We might, we might yell a little bit. But when we're in a, a, a bad situation, one of the first things we should do is pray because what happens when we pray? What does it do to us? Calms us down. Calms us down. You know, I think of the, a, a verse as I drive a lot. And I'll, like if you're heading south on 71 and you see the Ten Commandments that are there. And I think, and I think about how there's no temptation too strong, but basically God will give us a way out. And I think about that. And I think, if I'm thinking about doing something and I see that verse... Does that change my mind? Does that help me get out of that frame? Now, I don't know what you would be doing between there and unless it's, I don't know if it's before the outlets or after the outlets. You would think about going to, to steal something at the outlets. But, but you know, I, I think if they had that sign right in front of the casinos, it might have a different effect for the, the Christians who decide to go gamble. But I, I think that when we see things, uh, whether they're verses, and, and, and again, I, I travel a lot, drive a lot, and, and all over different freeways in Ohio, there are groups who take out billboards that will have signs that, that will have scripture, uh, they'll have sayings, and, and that's good because what you do, what I do when I see it, is right away I think about the scripture that it's, that it's implying or, or read it, and not read it, but I mean I, I read it in my mind as I'm driving. But it, it does make you stop and think, about what that billboard is offering. Now, obviously, billboards do the opposite uh, bad advertisement, too. But from a Christian side, when we see those advertisements, those things do have, a, have an effect on Christians. But do they have an effect on non-Christians? I don't know. I don't know. Tim, have you ever had anybody call you and say, hey, I saw a billboard. And explain to me what this means or that means. I, I don't know if it does. I, I don't know that we've ever had anybody come in, but I know that we, when we've sent house to house, home to home, to people's homes, we've had people respond. So, but we need to pray. In difficult times, we need to pray, and we always need to be in constant prayer. We have, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. 
1 Thessalonians 5.17, we're to pray continually. And then basically, in, and uh, so when we think about prayer, our prayer life, one way we, we can persevere through all trials is that we have that prayer life because we're communicating with our God. And who can help us more than God? No one. So we're communicating with God our uh, concerns, our joys. But so in order for us to preserve and get through the trials that are going to help our faith get stronger, we need to have a good prayer life. We need to have an active relationship with our Lord. Think about the last, since March, with us not being able to come together, how you felt during that, those months of March and April in May. Was it June 1st when we started back? June? So think about how you felt spiritually in those months that we weren't allowed to come, to, we, we weren't allowed, permitted to, to come together as a body. Um, doesn't mean we took away from our relationship with the Lord. We still had streaming. And I thought about that this morning. I thought, what if this happened? I don't know how long we've had the internet and streaming, but 20 years ago? If this happened 20 years ago, how would this have affected us? Because we wouldn't have had live streaming, and we would have had to make a decision. The elders would have had to make a decision. Do we conform to what the governor says, or do we still come and open the doors? But one of the reasons that we didn't do what, is because we don't know what happens with the virus. And, and how it's spread and all the different things about it. So, but luckily that this happened when it did, that we have, that we could stream. And so we could live stream services Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then Tim's class on Wednesday night. So we can continue to do that. But we have to have relationships, all of us individually have to still have a relationship with our Lord. How do we do that? How do we establish a relationship with God? Number, number one, we pray. And our first point, we pray, we, we persevere. What did Jesus do on the very night that he was betrayed? He prayed. He went to his father in prayer and, and, and prayed. We have so many examples of Jesus in prayer. Uh, when we read Paul's, Paul's always in, in prayer for the, for the different churches and, and the people. Uh, so we, have act, we need to have an active relationship with the Lord. Uh, we need to read scripture. Uh, before this happened, we, we would, Tim would tell us how many chapters we read as a, as, a, as a body. Even though we've stopped that because of putting the numbers out, we shouldn't have stopped that process of reading. So we have to continue to have a, a relationship with God in prayer and in, in studying the scriptures. We come to church. And again, when, when I talked about from March till June where we couldn't come to church, how did that affect you as a Christian in your daily walk of life, knowing that you miss this fellowship? Because uh, I, for one, enjoy the fellowship that we have. It's tough now that we can't shake, hug, do what we do. We do more than we should probably outside when we get outside the door. But uh, it is difficult to not be able to do the things that we've done basically all of our lives. For us who, who have been Christians forever, it seems, it's always been part of our makeup is the fellowship that we have with one another. So, but going to church is important. We need to have friends, Christian friends, also that we can go to. Now, if you have a worldly friend and you, you're having an issue, what are they going to advise you on in their mind? I mean, what, can they, what advice can they give you? Worldly advice, right? Because that's what they know. Ah, uh, just leave her. Ah, uh, don't mess with, you know. I mean, they're, they're going to give you what they think is good advice in their mind. But if you have a Christian friend that you go to, what are they going to tell you? Go to the scriptures. If you've got a problem, you go to the elders. What are the elders going to do? They're going to pray for you, number one. But then they're going to study scripture and find the right answers of, of what's happening and, and help you in those situations. And then again, coming to worship can help relieve a lot of the pains that we have. And we continue to give. Um, through this, this issue, being the treasurer, um, it was always kind of, for those who, who, if you have an interest, but it's kind of interesting that during our process of streaming, when it would come time to giving, and I, I, on my phone it would tell me, and I'd get ding, 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 ding. And so that's where people would give 
at the appropriate time, and that's that's good. Uh, I have people who give di at different times, but it's kind of it's just coincidental, I guess, that that some give right at that appropriate time, and and uh, so. But we, we should still continue to give, even though we're not sure financially where we are. Nothing says that we can take a break from the church, from from our commitment to the Lord. When life gets tough, we need to lean into God rather than pull away from, from Him. The harder the road, the more we need God in the driver's seat driving our lives. What happens to a lot of people when things turn bad? They get mad at God. How could God let my mother die? Have you heard people say that? How could God let my child... I mean, people will blame God for bad things that happen in their lives. And, and bad things happen in our lives. Um, it's just, it's, it's a life, unfortunately. How could, I, how could God let me lose my job? Now, how can I give if I don't have a job? Uh, we, we can do that all day long, but it always seems to tend, we tend to get to, how did God let that happen? How did God, um, so what happens then is we pull away. If God let that happen, then, then I don't need God in my life. Hopefully, Whoever says that lives long enough to realize that that's not the case. You do need God in your life, but God's always there. It's us who pull away. God doesn't pull away from us. We pull away from him. So for us to persevere, we need to have a good prayer life, which means we are continually in prayer. And then we have to have a, have a, a life, a relationship with God. And the way we do that is through church, through scripture, through Bible studies, uh, whatever else we could do, but we have to have that relationship with God. And it has to be a trusting relationship that works on our part, knowing that uh, as the trials that happen in our lives, that we need to look at them and realize that, okay, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to get better at, the, at my life because of this. It's tough to face bad decisions or bad things that happen in our lives. But one of the things that we do gain from that is the ability to exp explain to other people how to go through those situations. Uh, I can't say to somebody who lost a son, oh, I know how you feel, because I, that's not something that's happened to me. So, but for those who have had that situation, they have the ability to say, I, I know where you're coming from, and I feel your pain, and here's how we get through it. Uh, so, but for, with Christians, we have to be able to Always turn to God. God is our strength. Comments on that? John? That's a good point. And if you didn't hear that, what John said is that Jesus basically was tempted in all points like, like we are, and that he didn't sin. So he understands what we're going through. And when we do stumble, we go to him for forgiveness, and, and it's there. Harold?
James tells us it's going to happen. Like I said, when, he, when, he, when we read those verses, it didn't say if, but it says when, and then it's fall. We fall into, I mean, it's, it's, they're trials. It's not something that's, and it is how we deal with it. That's, that's what we have to. And that's, that's the world's, I think that's the world's view, is it's not my problem. But I think here, in this realm, it is our problem. And I think one of the points th that I wanted to make of this class is that those who don't have this, the church, they miss so much. I mean, I, I think of all the times, being a Christian so many years, where people have lost loved ones or have gone through situations, and it's the church that's there for food, for shelter, whatever else they need. Kelsey. But, but, you know, if nothing else, remember that verse in your head. Because any time that you're ready for to sin, think about that verse and look for that way out. And it's a, an escape. I mean, I, I think the words that are used in Scripture, like here, you know, count it all joy whenever you, because like Kelsey said, it, it makes me happy when I'm going through something because it's making me better. And that's what we have to do is make us better and not make us worse. But if we're Christians, then we know that whatever the situation is, lost income, lost job, we will get through it, especially with the family of Christians that help us get through that. That's what this is. That's, and then if we keep that verse in our mind, and it says that there's a way out to escape. And again, the devil is, we know he is a roaring lion looking to how he can devour that, and so that's a way of an escape. If you do nothing else but when that door sends knocking at your door, if you think of that verse, there's your way of escape. Is to know that you need to get out of there or, or stop or do whatever, but that's your way out. Okay? Any other comments? <laughs> Everything, yes.
mean, as Christians, the one thing, too, to always remember is that we have a reward. Now, it may not mean that we overcome the illness, but it means that at the end of that, we have a reward. And that's our joy, knowing what our reward is, that it's through Jesus Christ, it's through being Christians, and that through forgiveness and all the things that we talk about with prayer and having that life of relationship with God and living our life right, we then have the, the reward at the end. It may not be here on this earth as far as we may not be able to overcome an illness, something like that, but we can overcome. We, we will overcome. Another way to, to do it is knowing that it will get better. There's a, we all know in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, uh, the famous King Solomon's wisely says, a time. So verses 3, 1 through 8, basically tells us there's a time for everything. There's a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to root, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. So times, there, there's a time for everything. And we will go through many of those in our lives. But we have to get through those by having the perseverance to press on no matter what happens to us. And, and the example of the earthly ones of, of Hershey and his failures, but that didn't stop him. Uh, we can look at David Williams with Wendy's. He found that Wendy's what when he was in his 50s uh, after unsuccessful other business attempts. So failures happen in people's lives, but they continue on, and then they become successful. We will fail as Christians. We'll fall, but because Christ has given us that forgiveness, we then can still have that reward. So we need to know that there are times we'll get better, that when it is tough, when there are difficulties, we will, we, we, there will be times that will be better. Think about the children of Israel. They wandered in the wilderness 40 years before they got to see the promise. And then the Israelites had to wait 70 years before some, not all, were exiled back. Jonah was in the well of the belly. Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days or big fish, whichever translation you want to use. Uh, and then think about Jesus. He had to wait 30 years to start his ministry. Was he ready at 12? Was Jesus not ready at 12 years old? Who was he talking to when he was 12? Religious leaders, right? Not for an hour, for a couple of days. So you think Jesus was ready at 12, but the time wasn't right. But Jesus waited until the time was right. So... Uh, in Isaiah, the 55, 55th chapter, verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So we don't know what happens in our lives, what God has planned for us, whose path he might, we, we might get into somebody's path, that we can help those individuals. We don't know that. You know, when you guys started going to Costa Rica, you had no idea what you were getting into. But think of the lives that have been touched because of Costa Rica or other mission work that we've done or other things that we've done. Um, so we don't know what God has planned for us, but his ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than ours. We have to have faith in the trials that we have in our lives help make that faith stronger. But that's all individually. The elders can't make us have better faith, stronger faith. It can't happen. We can't just lay down on our pillow and write faith on our pillow and wake up and have more faith. It doesn't happen that way. But by these trials that happen in our lives, if we have a good prayer life, basically we have to be good soldiers. I guess if we could put it in a term, we have to be good soldiers for Christ. And we can look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, where it talks about the whole armor of God. And one of the things that it talks about there is the perseverance. So as soldiers of Christ... We have to preserve, we have to press on. We have to press on knowing that what our goal is at the end. And then the other last thing, we won't talk long about it, but we have to persevere with others. And that's what I talked about earlier. 
that for those who don't have this, they don't know what they're missing. I mean, really, when, when a new baby is born, uh, the, the things that happen from the church family, uh, when there's sickness, when there's death, uh, the, the things that the church family does, other people don't have those things. Um, it, it's, it's, you can't put a value on what's there, but it's very important that we have the relationships that we have. Mary, were you going to say something? Or are you just waving? Oh, okay, all right. So really, the, the, as we think about how we're going to um, persevere, we really do it through, through each of what we have here in our relationships with one another. And if that relationships that we have aren't strong, then we should tell ourselves we need to work on that because that's really important. That can help us through bad situations. Uh, if we're relying on an earthly friend to help us get there, it's probably not going to happen. We have to rely on one another. That's why in some of the comments that were made, and Harold talked, well, that's why our elders are older men. <laughs> I don't want to say you're old, but you're old, but you're old, but that's, that's why you're... <laughs> Ah, if you didn't hear that, Sue's got written in her book in her, at the end of chapter 1, at the end of the Bible, when temptation knocks, have faith open the door. Is that what it said? Let faith, faith answer it. So, I don't know where the bell is. Yes? What's that term about idol... Even phone calls. I mean, how many people had phone calls during this where we didn't get to visit, but people would call and say, hey, just check and see how you're doing. That's... Anybody else? All right. Thank you.